Today's guest is an author of the book, Always Think of Me. And as she shares about her book, she also shares about how she endured the tragedy of the loss of her son. So much to learn. Building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. Just to let you know ahead of time, Giant Builders, we're going to be giving a book away from this episode. So it would be great for you to leave a comment in our social media or our YouTube channel. I hope that you've already joined and follow us on our different social medias and our YouTube because it helps us to get more exposure, to get in front of more people, but also keeps you connected with us. So let's go to our guest. Good afternoon, Giant Builders. Welcome. And our guest today is Lori Kesey. Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Lois. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Good. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about you and what you do? Yes, I'll be happy to do that. I am a I'm an author blogger. I started my career many years ago as a journalist. Um, but my my career took a different turn five years ago, five and a half years ago, through the tragic, after the tragic loss of my son. Mm. And that's when I started writing the book, Always Think of Me. And I started my blog, which is called The Accidental Blogger. And the name fits because I never had any intention of becoming a blogger. You know, I thought, oh, you know, you have had this awesome career as a communication consultant, worked for NASA, loved it, went to all kinds of places, and every day was a learning experience, especially in technology, space technology. Um, but after that incident, I had to change course, and that's what happened. Oh, I imagine. And I, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes I feel, oh, you know, I'm not whining. Um, the loss of a child is horrible. And in fact, one of my closest friends, she's the mom of four, two girls and a, two boys. And in late December, she lost her second son in just two and a half years. And honestly, I cannot even begin to imagine going through that. Mm -hmm. This is mind numbing. And I, I, I believe, I know she and her husband will eventually get through it, but, but grieving is a process. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned from my experience. You know, I used to say, um, the most ridiculous things to people, oh, your son or daughter or a lo uh, you know, a, a lost one is in a better place. Nothing could be more tone deaf than that mm -hmm. because that person doesn't care because that person saying, I understand that intellectually, but I want that person here with me now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, so I had to learn all that in well, the process. So what do you, how do you learn that? I mean, okay. So what being from that side, what is mm -hmm. something that would be nice to say to somebody? who lost somebody. I think the best thing to say to someone is that if you don't understand what it's like, you say that. I don't, I can't imagine what you're going through, but please know that, that I am thinking about you. I am praying for you. If that's what that person would want prayers. Um, I think just recognition that you don't really know, mm -hmm. but that you're, that you, your heart breaks for them is, is what, I think is more appropriate than, oh, some, some silly bromide, you know, oh, he's in a better place. She's in a better place. No, okay. I don't think so. Okay. That's very helpful. I mean, it's nice to hear that from someone who has that experience and just the grieving process is really complicated. So, and you know, we Americans, we Westerners will, you know, we'll get on the phone. Hey, how are you doing? And it's, it's like rote. And I will call my friend and I stop myself because I'm ready to say, how are you doing? Well, she's not doing well. I know that, mm -hmm. you know, she is struggling and she is going through her day just like my husband and I did 
like zombies, not mm-hmm. knowing what to do next. So it's almost like you're walking around chasing your tail like a dog and you just can't seem to focus. And so you really have to kind of watch what you say there. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not doing well. You know, you don't want to just rub salt into the wounds either. It's hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, tell me about your book. Always think of me. Okay. Well, the back cover says, if you don't mind me reading just no, the first fine. part, sometimes love gives you a second chance. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it returns in a way you could never imagine. This is an uncommon love story. It is about a 33-year-old party boy who meets the woman of his dreams. When they part company abruptly, he moves on, never thinking he'll see her again. But then he finds himself on an otherworldly mission to see her again. But first, he must overcome his own doubts and stop her from doing the unthinkable. Wow. Sounds like a lot of impact there. (laughs) Well, I kind of hope so. I hope people like it. I mean, Mm -hmm. it took a long time to write it. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, when I changed my trajectory, I went into this period of reflection. I really couldn't work anymore. I, I had to, I tried and for several months, but I decided I was going to devote my life to writing this novel. And during that period, I started thinking about um, resilience. I started thinking about life's purpose. And those are two central themes in the book. Hmm. We all have a purpose. And meanwhile, when I started writing this, um, there was this huge uptick in suicides. Maybe you remember this. This was during the COVID Mm -hmm. lockdowns, all that. And I was started thinking, my goodness, if people really understood that they're not random, that they were created for a purpose, maybe these, these young people, these older people, whoever, wouldn't have taken their own lives. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, when your purpose intersects with someone else's purpose, if you don't achieve your purpose, someone else may not achieve his or her purpose. And that's kind of central to the book. It's a message oh. I really hope people will will, will resonate with people um, because you just never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you have to live your life, you know, purposely and, 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 and hopefully, you know, you will benefit someone else. Your story will help someone else because we simply can't avoid, you know, the hard things in life. And that's, that's also projected in this book. So becoming an author wasn't something that was on your radar. How do you feel that, how did you get to that point? I mean, where where was the aha moment? Well, you know, being an author was on my plate. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Oh, when I was in high school and Uh when I was a little kid, I'm going to look. I used to write these goofy little stories and I don't know if you can see this, but, yeah. but this, this was something I had written when I was a little kid with my cousin, we would go to my grandmother's, my Nana's, and we would write, spend time on her, her screened in porch, writing these goofy little stories. And then oh. we would illustrate them. So yeah, I've always wanted to be a writer. Uh-huh. That's why I went into journalism mm-hmm. and I did try take a number of fiction writing classes, you know, throughout my twenties and thirties. But, you know, my, my instructors say, well, Lori, you're really good at creating characters, but where's this story going? There's no story. And so, you know, I didn't really have a story until, you know, five, five and a half years ago. And I'm not saying that my book reflects what happened with our personal tragedy, but Mm -hmm. it certainly inspired the book. Mm -hmm. And that's, I've had a story and it's a bittersweet thing. Would I, would I have wanted this not to be the way it happened? Absolutely. But it did. And I had to find purpose in this suffering. And I think, I think that's helpful too, to people who mourn something, whether it be a divorce, the loss of a child, betrayal by a friend. I mean, 
adversity comes in many different forms and flavors. Right. And we all go through that process. And the key is getting to that period, that, that, that acceptance, because the, then you can move on. You will, your life is forever changed, but you aren't mired in grief, which is not a good place to be. You don't want to put your tent there. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the writing of this book helped you to work through the mourning process. It did. Mm -hmm. It did. And I believe that's how I was able to go through the process because I wrote I wrote and I, and you know, like I said, I had a background in journalism. I love writing feature stories about people. Um, and that, that has come in handy with my, my blog post, the accidental blogger, because I interview folks who've, who've encountered some sort of adversity. I mean, it can range anywhere. And I try to, um, write about people who went through it, but also prevailed mm -hmm. because, Honestly, sometimes you just simply need, okay, okay, that person gets me and I can do this too. I can get to that other side. Mm -hmm. and that's why I started the blog. So what type of people, I mean, you say all kinds of adversities, um, like, I don't know, give me an idea of like, what kind of adversities would I learn from on your blog? Okay, for instance, here's a good one. Um, I interviewed a woman who couldn't have children. Mm. So she set out to adopt a child. She ended up getting hooked up with a con woman. Oh. A horrible situation. I mean, come on. You know, pulling on your heartstrings and this woman was just there to take her money. Another one is... Um, people who've lost their kids to drug overdoses, mm. Pe uh, people who were addicts themselves and they, they overcame their addictions, um, uh, child trafficking, mm. interviewing people who were trafficked. These are terrible situations. Yeah. And in, I think it's April, I, I interviewed a man who is a police officer north of Dallas, and he works on a special task force that investigates internet crimes against children. Wow. And to me, I call that um, the dirtiest job because mm -hmm. this is a horrible job, but he does it because he feels impact. He feels passion uh, or compassion for these kids. And it's his life mission to protect these kids from these predators out there. Yeah. And I truly admire this man. He's been doing that job for 19 years. Oh man. And, oh Yes. You know, he sees things that no one would want to see. Yeah. And he has saved some kids. Mm -hmm. And what a wonderful thing. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to go check out your blog. So we'll have that link below, Giant Builders, so you can check out some of those stories too. Just the, sounds like they're so inspirational too. Well, that I, that's what I hope. Um, mm -hmm. There, I also interviewed a woman who lost her husband. And the process she went through, you know, wondering, is he in heaven? Mm. You know, because she wasn't sure. Now yeah. that's a hard, and this man, she was, she wanted, to, she was wanted to marry him. And in fact, they had made plans to do that when he was tragically killed in a helicopter mm. accident. So, you know, we, again, we all face some sort of adversity, mm -hmm. but, but God, there is healing, Yeah, but you can I, find healing. God helps us pre prevail. So, yeah. That's exactly right. And I guess what I've noticed too is those who do have a faith, mm -hmm. they tend to be more successful than those who don't. Mm -hmm. I've talked with people who've suffered from deep depression and the negative voices in their head and they, they don't understand where that comes from mm -hmm. because they don't really have a faith. Yeah. And you know, I, 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 I hope that these folks do um, overcome the depression. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think faith plays a huge role mm -hmm. in overcoming. Yeah. Well, with all that you've been experiencing through your blog and everything, like what kind of advice would you give to people? Look outward. Mm. 
you know, uh, like a friend said, there's beauty in the ugly. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to find meaning and purpose in our suffering and then to repurpose our lives to doing something positive. That's that's my advice. Mm -hmm. You know, if if your child um, died from a fentanyl overdose, share your stories with others because there are thousands of others mm -hmm. who've experienced the same thing. And sometimes people blame themselves and they had nothing to do with this. Nothing. It happened. And if you can give a parent, you know, that message, it could make all the difference in that person's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what, what's your next project? What do you, what's ahead for you? Lois, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I don't I, either. <laughs> I know it's a horrible thing. You know, the, the novel could easily have a sequel. Uh -huh. But I haven't really put my mind to that yet. I will I will most definitely continue the blog. I love writing about other people. And I also do a monthly letter to um, subscribers. And I do like, I enjoy writing that too. I have a bunch of short story ideas in my head. And I've written two short stories and they're available on my website. Um, so I will continue writing. I mean, it's in my lifeblood. It's in my blood. I I can't imagine what I would do with my time. Yeah. I hate television. I never watch television. <laughs> and I don't really like um gardening. Oh, you know, uh -huh. I, I don't I don't like that. So I need to do something, you know, my and but I do think I and I also will be volunteering. I I was involved with a uh reunite, which um was a ministry that um helped mothers who had lost custody of their children because mm -hmm. of adversity, mm -hmm. typically drug abuse. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to be, uh, I'll be moving. I will be d doing something with women who mm -hmm. find themselves in tough positions. Oh. And I'd like to be a mentor. That's oh, what I really would like would to be. be. Oh yeah. yeah. And I have a couple Wonderful. organizations in mind. So I think that's where I will be spending a lot of my time in the uh -huh. coming months and oh. years. <laughs> So what advice would you give to somebody who's thinking about writing a book? Write it and then <laughs> persevere. Um, writing, at least for me, writing a novel was very difficult. I was accustomed to journalistic writing and not making things up out of whole cloth. Um, and also you have to put on a tough skin. Hmm. Um, lots of books are written. Lots of books are released. And it's a little scary. No, because we all don't, we all fear rejection. And what if they don't like my book? You know, that type of thing. I'm really, really trying to keep those negative voices mm -hmm. at bay. You know, uh-uh, just do it. And if it's your dream, then you absolutely need to do it. Otherwise, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a horrible thing. Yeah. You know, you have a dream and you don't try to do it. Nah, just do it. All right. So the title of the book is Always Think of Me. So we're going to give one away. So Giant Build is if you leave a comment in the social media postings or on the YouTube channel, then we'll have a drawing and we'll give a book. And Giant Build is when you leave comments on, especially the YouTube channel, it helps us reach more people. So that would be really helpful and really appreciated. And you, you could win a book. <laughs> <laughs> so um, any closing thoughts? Well, I thank you for allowing me on your show. This okay. has been a very nice conversation. You're, I, I love your mission. This is awesome. So best wishes to you too. Well, thank you very much. All right. Well, Giant Builders, we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you for listening. This has been The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. <laughs>